In this lesson, we're going to work with exponents, review our rules of exponents, and then look at scientific notation. So, if you are given the expression a to the n power, a is referred to as the base, n is the exponent, also known as the power. So we should know these terms and use these terms. So what if you are given an exponential expression and you are asked to write it in expanded form? So let's look at the first example. Here you have 5z, 5 times z, and that quantity is being squared. So if I want to write it in expanded form, I would just show that the 5z is being multiplied twice. So that is expanded form. If you were to evaluate it, simplify it, then we would actually multiply the 5 times the 5 and the z times the z. But right now we're just writing it in expanded form. Now the next example sometimes confuses people. This negative is associated with the s being squared. This is not negative s all being squared. The s is being squared, and then we have a negative out in front. So if I want to write this in expanded form, this would be negative, and then the s to the fourth power would be s times s times s times s. So that's not the same as, and dare I even write it, negative s times negative s times negative s times negative s. So you have to be very careful where the negative sign is and what it applies to. It applies to the result of multiplying s times s times s times s. Now the next example, if we want to write it in expanded form, let's go ahead and take a look at what the power refers to. So in this case, if we look at the base 2, hopefully you recognize that it has an exponent of 1. That squared is being applied only to the y, not to the 2. So the 2 is out in front. The y is being squared, so we would write that in expanded form as y times y. And then the expression x minus 3 is being cubed. So that would be x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3. And this is how you would write it again in expanded form. If you're being asked to simplify, then we would actually multiply these little parentheses together, and we'll discuss that later. So now I want you to take a moment to complete the table below. And then if you want to check your answers on your calculator, you can. But we want to first take each of these expressions and we want to see if we can write it in expanded form. And then we want to actually perform the multiplication and get the product. So 2 to the first power means, well, we just have 1, 2. So there's nothing to multiply. The result is 2. In the next example, we have 2 squared. So that's 2 times 2 in expanded form, and if we were actually to multiply those two together, we would get 4. Continuing along this process, 2 cubed would be 2 times 2 times 2. Hopefully you can get 8. Again, 2 to the fourth, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that would be 16. Now, what happens if you raise a base, in this case 2, to the 0 power? Well, it kind of depends on what is being raised to the 0 power. If it's a non-zero number, in this case 2, 2 to the 0 power, we cannot write in expanded form, and we will see and show how that equals 1. 2 to the negative 1 power, again, can't be written in expanded form, but we will study more how if we have a negative exponent, this affects the base. So this, in fact, is 1 over 2. Now what I'd like you to take a moment to do for each of these six is to represent them in expanded form and then simplify and multiply. So what I'm hoping that you'll recognize are your rules of exponents. So these are kind of examples that will help refresh your memory on your rules of exponents. So take a moment to do this. If you need to pause the video, that's fine, and then check your answers. 
if we were to expand, represent number one in expanded form, two cubed is two times two times two, two squared is two times two. So if we would show this in expanded form, we'd see that the base two, so now I'm gonna represent it as a single base raised to a power. This is two to the fifth power. If we were to evaluate that, you would get 32. So here it is represented as a single base with a power. This is the expanded form, and this is the product. Now try the next one. Two cubed, which is two times two times two, is being squared. So we would repeat it again by multiplication. So expanded form, we would have how many of them? Six. So there it is in expanded form, and this would be two to the sixth power, which equals 64. Now let's look at the next one. Let's go ahead and expand what's inside the parentheses. The two cubed is two times two times two. It's times another two inside the parentheses. And then this is being squared. So I'm going to repeat it by multiplication. So in expanded form, how many twos are being multiplied? There it is in expanded form. We can represent this as a single expression with one base and one power as two to the eighth. And then if we were to actually evaluate that, we would get 256. Now let's show the example four in expanded form. The numerator would be two times two times two. The denominator would be two. Hopefully you can see that you can cancel. You can simplify this fraction, dividing both the numerator and denominator by two. This would leave us with two times two, which is two squared, which is four. Hmm, so we're thinking about dividing bases with exponents, like bases with exponents. Let's look at the next example. The numerator is two squared, the denominator is two to the fourth. So again, we could simplify, and we'd be left with one in the numerator, two squared in the denominator, which is one fourth. And then in the last example, we see that we have two times two in the numerator, 2 times 2 in the denominator, so this simplifies to 1. So I'd like you to take a moment to think about what's happening, what type of operations you're performing, paying very close attention to the bases and the exponents, and see if you can come up with any rules. Once you think you've figured out some rules or remembered some rules, we can review them. So on this page, you're trying to think back and write down rules that are represented perhaps in the previous examples. Once you've completed this, move on. So on this page, we actually have all of the rules that you hopefully remembered for your properties of exponents. Now these are true for all non-zero real numbers A and B and integers, so those exponents are integers, m and n. The first rule that we're going to look at is the product of powers property. So what is happening with this property? When do we use it and how do we use it? To multiply powers with the same base, so here we have base a and we have powers m and n. How do we, what do we do when we multiply like bases? Well, when you multiply like bases, you are going to add the exponents and keep the base. So if you forget these rules, you can always expand them and simplify, but hopefully you remember the rules. So this is going to be keep the base A, add the exponents. So let's take a look at an example. For example, if you have x squared times x cubed, using the rule, the product of powers property, this would be x to the 2 plus 3, which is x to the 5th. Now we could have expanded this 
x squared times x cubed, if we didn't remember the rule, x times x times x times x times x, and hopefully you see that you do get x to the fifth. Now the next rule is the quotient of powers property. So what happens when you divide powers with like bases? When you divide powers with like bases, you subtract. And what do you subtract? You subtract the denominator's exponent. from the numerator's exponent and of course keep the base. So how would we represent this? Well we keep the base a and then it would be m minus n. So let's take a look at an example. For example, if you have x to the fifth over x squared this would be x to the 5 minus 2, giving us x cubed. Again, we can expand this if we had x to the 5th over x squared. If we forget the rule, expand it, and maybe you'll remember it. Or you can simplify and see what you're left with, x cubed. The next property is the power of a power. When you have a base raised to a power, and that is raised to another power, what do you do? You multiply the exponents and keep the base. So in this case, we would say a to the m times n. If we look at an example, perhaps x cubed all squared, keep the base x, multiply the exponents, and that would give us x to the sixth. We could have expanded this like we did earlier, and this would be x cubed squared, and again, you'll see you'll get x to the sixth. The next rule of exponents is the power of a product property. So what happens when you have a product and that entire product is raised to a power? Well, what you're going to do is distribute the exponent to each factor in the product. So if you have a product, you are going to distribute the exponent to each of the factors. So this would be a to the m times b to the m. Let's take a look at an example. An example, if we had 2, let's say, times a all to the fourth power, we would have to distribute that power of 4, the exponent of 4, to each factor. So that would be 2 to the fourth times a to the fourth. Then we'd go one step further, 2 to the fourth, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16, a to the fourth. So in this case, we are distributing the exponent. And last but not least, if you have a quotient, a divided by b, quotient, division, and that is raised to a power, what do we do? Again, we distribute the exponent to each factor in the quotient. So it makes sense. So we're distributing the exponent to each factor, both in the numerator and the denominator. So this would be a to the m over b to the m. Let's take a look at an example. If you had x over 3, a quotient raised to a power, we're going to distribute that exponent to each factor. So that would be x squared over 3 squared and we'd go one step further and evaluate the denominator and square three to get nine. Let's take a look at another example. What if you had b cubed over b cubed? Or b over b cubed? Well, this would be one cubed, which would be one. 
remembering our rules of exponents, in this case, we have a quotient of like bases. We would subtract the denominator's exponent from the numerator's exponent, and this is where we get that a number, a non-zero number raised to the zero power is one. So now let's use these properties of exponents to simplify expressions. Now, what do I mean by simplify? How do we know if an exponential expression is completely simplified? Well, there are no parentheses. There are no powers raised to powers. Each base occurs only once. We've simplified. And there is no negative or zero exponents. So once we recognize we've done all this and we have satisfied this, it is completely simplified. So let's take a look at the first example. You are being asked to simplify. So I see we have, well, this is all multiplication. So if we remember our properties, order doesn't matter. So I can go ahead and say 3 times negative 4. And then I have z to the seventh and z squared. So I can multiply three times negative four and get negative 12. And then I have a product of like bases. So the first thing we did is rearrange the order using the commutative property of multiplication and rearrange the order. And now I'm going to use the product property. So the product property is going to allow me to keep the base z and add the exponents. Now, is that completely simplified? Yes, it is. Now let's look at the next example. The next example, you have a quotient in the parentheses. In the numerator of the quotient, you have a product and you have all of this raised to the power of three. So what might you wanna do first? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can approach this problem. You could simplify the quotient of like bases, the z's in the parentheses first, or you can go ahead and distribute this three on the outside of the parentheses to each factor inside the parentheses. As long as you're using your rules correctly, you're going to get the same answer. So it's up to you how you want to do this problem. Let's go ahead and use our quotient to a power property. So that means I'm going to take this exponent and I'm going to distribute it to every factor in the quotient. So that means I'm going to have y cubed, z cubed, cubed, and in the denominator, z to the fifth cubed. Now I can go ahead and use my power to a power property. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at z cubed cubed and z fifth cubed and I'm going to keep the base in each of those expressions and multiply the exponents. So that's going to give me y cubed times z to the ninth over z to the 15th. Now at this point, we can use our quotient of like bases property and we can simplify the z's, the base z's. Keep the base and subtract the denominator's exponent from the numerator's exponent. So that is going to give me y cubed times z to the negative sixth. However, we can't leave a negative exponent in our answer. So if we go back to this step, we notice that we have nine z's being multiplied in the numerator, 15 z's being multiplied in the denominator. So if we were to simplify z for z from the numerator to the denominator, we'd have z's left over in the denominator. So in essence, we're going to expand it in theory, but recognize that if you want to address a negative exponent, and let's say in the numerator, to get rid of the negative exponent, you're going to keep the base, and you're going to move the numerical value of the exponent 
to the other side of the dividing line. So since the negative 6 is in the numerator's exponent, I'm going to move that base z with the power 6, but I'm going to lose this little minus sign when I cross the dividing line. Similarly, if you had a negative exponent in the denominator, to represent that without a negative exponent, you'd keep the base, you'd keep the power, but you'd lose the minus sign when you cross the dividing line to bring it up to the numerator. Now, in this chart, we have some common errors. So let's talk about how we would correct these and describe what the error is. Now, I want you to take a moment to look at each of these examples, if you want to pause the video, and see if you can see how to represent this correctly and describe the error in the first column. So the first column is incorrect. Figure out what's wrong and what property is being abused. In the first example, we see that we have a product of like bases. The product of like bases says we're going to keep the base and add the exponents. So this should be b to the 7th, not b to the 12th. So instead, if we want to describe the error, the error was they multiplied the exponents instead of adding. So we're supposed to add the exponents, not multiply, when we're multiplying like bases. Common error. Make sure you don't do that. In the next example, again, we have a product of like bases. 3 squared times 3 to the 4th, keep the base 3, and what do we do to the exponents? We add the exponents. So again, this should be 3 to the 6th, not 9 to the 6th. You keep the base. So you're supposed to keep the base, not multiply. In the next example, we have the quotient of like bases. Well, the quotient of like bases tells you to keep the base and subtract the denominator's exponent from the numerator's exponent. So this should be 5 to the 12th power, not 5 to the 4th power. So you're not supposed to do not divide the exponents. You're supposed to subtract instead the denominator's exponent from the numerator's exponent. In the next example, hopefully you recognize that this is a product to a power. The product to a power rule tells us to distribute the exponent to each factor, base factor, in the product. So this should be 64a cubed. So what happened here? They forgot to distribute the 3 to the base factor 4. So we need to distribute exponent to each factor in the product. Now look at the next example. You have a base raised to a negative exponent. When you have a base raised to a negative exponent, you keep the base, you keep the power, but you lose the minus sign when you cross the dividing line. So that becomes a b to the n in the denominator. So we lose the minus sign when we cross the dividing line. And in the last example, here you have a sum raised to a power, not a product, a sum raised to a power, and it's a negative exponent. So you're going to keep that expression, a plus b, and to lose the minus sign, you're going to cross the dividing line. So the exponent applies to the expression that's a sum. You do not distribute that exponent to everything inside the parentheses because, well, that's a sum not a product. So an exponent applies to the expression, which is a sum. Now I'd like to talk about scientific notation.
scientific notation is used to represent very, very large numbers and very, very tiny numbers. A number is written in scientific notation when it can be expressed or when it is expressed in this form. A is an integer between 1 and 10. So this must be an integer in between 1 and 10. And then we take that and multiply it by 10 to some power. Now this power can be positive or negative. That's going to kind of give you a clue as to how big or small the number is. So let's look at the first example. We have 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth over 1.5 times 10 to the sixth. Now, this is written in scientific notation, the numerators in scientific notation, the denominators in scientific notation. Now, if we were going to simplify this, we can think of maybe a clever way to do this. Since this is all multiplication, I can go ahead and look at this as 4.5 divided by 1.5 times, and look at this quotient of like bases, quotient of like bases. So if I were to simplify this, I would get 3. If I were to simplify this using my quotient of like bases, this would be 10 to the, and then negative 5, minus 6. So that would be the negative 11 power for 10. Now, is the answer in scientific notation? Yes, it is. Because 3 is a number between 1 and 10, and it's multiplied by 10 to some power. So this is, in fact, scientific notation. Now let's look at the next example. In the next example, again, everything is being multiplied. All of these are being multiplied together. So I could use my property that tells me I can rearrange the order. Do we remember that property? The commutative property of multiplication. And I can rewrite this as 2.6 times 8.5 times 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 7th. Now, if that makes you uncomfortable, we can rewrite it as 2.6 times 8.5. If you'd rather see it like this, we can rewrite it like this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two together to get 22.1. Now, I'm going to multiply these two together using my product of like bases and get 10 to the, well, when we multiply like bases, what do we do to the exponents? We add them. So that would be to the 11th power. Now my question is, is this in scientific notation? Well, it resembles it, but it's not in scientific notation. Why? Because this is not a number between 1 and 10. So how can we rewrite this so that is, it is in, in scientific notation. Well, we'd have to move this decimal. We'd have to move it so that we'd get 2.21. Well, what are we doing when we are moving that decimal pl place? Well, we're, are we multiplying by 10? Are we dividing by 10? We're dividing by 10 because we're making this a smaller number. So if we're dividing by 10, that means we have to raise this power. If you don't see it, go ahead and expand this. Perform the multiplication. Use your calculator. This is 22.1 times 10 to the 11th. So 10 times 10 times 10, 11 times. You're going to get a very large number. In this case, this is 2.21 times 10 to the 12th, an extra 10, which is going to give us the same value at the end of the day but this is in scientific notation. So take a moment to think about that. Now in the next page, you're going to have some practice problems. And these practice problems are to help you reinforce and use the rules of exponents. So go ahead and do your best to, to work out those problems.
Do your best to simplify each expression using your rules of exponents and box your answer. If you need to use additional pieces of paper, that's fine. Just keep it neat and make sure you're writing the problem, the problem number, showing all your work, and boxing your answers. These 14 problems we will review together. Please try your best to do them. I know some of them are kind of tricky, but do your best.